Expand your vocabulary with our core 2,000 words ebook. It's free and packed with essential expressions that you'll use on a daily basis. Start building your vocabulary today. Click the link in the description below to download your free English ebook before it's gone. If I wear the same shirt, no one will ever know that I age. <laughs> Hi everybody, welcome back to Top Words. My name is Alicia and today we're going to talk about 10 pairs of words that are essential to pronounce clearly. These are words that people make pronunciation mistakes with and they can really confuse the listener. So let's take a look. Think, sink. The first pair of words is think and sink. Think and sink. The problem here is the th sound. The th sound uh, is not pronounced clearly sometimes, so students mean to say, I think, blah, 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 but they don't pronounce the th clearly, and it sounds like, I think, blah, blah, blah. Don't do this. I think. So it might feel strange, but when you're first trying to make this sound accurately, try putting your tongue between your teeth. I think. I think think. And as you get accustomed, as you get used to doing that, you can make the movement gradually smaller and smaller. So it becomes, I think, I think. You just push your tongue against the back of your teeth. I think becomes, I think, I think. I don't put my tongue between my teeth now, but uh, when you're beginning, you can try to do that to work on your pronunciation. I think that pizza is awesome. I always use pizza in my examples. So like, I think that think is an easy word to pronounce. Um, so sink, sink uh, does not use your tongue against the back of your teeth at all. Sink. It's just a, s a simple S sound. Sink. Your tongue is far back in your mouth. So think and sink are quite different. Some example sentences you can use to help you. Um, let's see. Um, I think this is a good thing. So I think this is a good thing. That uses the TH sound a lot. I think this is a good thing. So anything with that TH, this, that, these, those, the, this, I don't know, this, that, these, those, the, mother, father, sister, brother. Oh, sister doesn't. <laughs> but <laughs> anything with a TH sound, then it can be good for pronunciation practice. To differentiate, so I think this is a good thing, and wash your hands in the sink. So there's no th, th there, okay? In the sink, perhaps. So keep that in mind. All right. Work, walk. The next pair is work and walk. Work and walk. The problem here is the vowel sound. So work has a very like kind of deep, uh, a deep feeling about it. It's like in the throat, work. It's, a, it's like making an ER sound almost, work, but your, your mouth isn't opening very wide. Your mouth is still quite narrow, work, work in American English. Walk, however, is very open, wa, like your mouth is a bit tall. So work and walk create very, very different sounds. But if you're not clear about your pronunciation, like, um, I have to walk every day. It's like, hmm? I have to, which one? You have to work or you have to walk every day. So be very clear about your pronunciation of these two vowel sounds. A great practice sentence is, I walk to work every day. I walk to work every day. Travel, trouble. Okay, the next one is travel and trouble. Travel and trouble. There are two points of difficulty here. First is the vowel sound, travel. Uh, in travel, it's a very tall travel. And then it's followed by a V sound, the travel. So your teeth are touching your lip uh, to make an exaggerated pronunciation, travel. Uh, with trouble, however, the vowel sound first is tr. It's a, it's a, it's a U sound, tr. So it's not tall like travel. Travel is very tall. Tr has like has a uh, a u sound in it that the the a ah in travel does not have. So trouble. It's like saying uh when you're thinking like uh uh uh. When, if you're trying to think of an idea, it's the same uh sound we use in American English. Uh trouble. And here the the uh sound is followed by b. The, the B sound of trouble. So there's no, your teeth should not touch your lower lip. So travel and trouble. So your lips should come together when you pronounce that B sound. Trouble, trouble, travel, trouble. Mm. So these are two different words. But if you say, um, I don't want to, 
I don't know. I don't want to trouble you. What? <laughs> like, make sure that you're pronouncing these two words very clearly so that you don't cause confusion among the people listening. So travel and trouble. Examples. I like to travel. He got in trouble. Rice. Lice. All right, the next pair is rice and lice. Rice and lice. Sometimes people have difficulties making the R and the L sounds very clearly in words such as these. So rice, rice. Um, so when I, again, exaggerating that sound, but rice, my whole mouth comes together to make that R sound initially, rice, rice. Uh, when I make the L sound for lice, lice, my tongue is touching the top of my mouth, lice, but, and my, uh, my tongue is behind my teeth, uh, my, my upper row of teeth. So lice and rice, the two are made very, very differently, these sounds. So rice is the food we eat. Lice, however, is a disgusting creature that can live in your body hair. It's awful, awful. So if you say I eat lice with every meal, horrifying, horrifying. Don't make this pronunciation mistake. Rice and lice, lice. Think about how to clearly pronounce these. Rice is delicious. Lice are disgusting. Grass, glass. So another pair where the R and L issue might cause trouble is with grass and glass. Grass and glass. So again, as I did with rice and lice, my whole mouth comes together to make the R sound grass. So my mouth goes like this, essentially grass, grass. With glass, however, it's much more open. My tongue is at the top of my mouth. Glass, glass. So grass, glass. Um, these two are very, very similar. Um, but again, just try not to mix the two pronunciations to, so that you don't create confusion for the person listening. And, and also, if you, if you confuse it with your pronunciation, I've noticed some people confuse it in writing as well. So it's very important to make um, these, the distinction between these two words very clear. Okay, in a sentence, let's sit on the grass. Be careful of the glass. Arrogant, elegant. The next pair is arrogant and elegant. Arrogant and elegant. So one more time, we have this R and L issue. Arrogant, arrogant, uh, an adjective meaning someone who is too confident, who thinks very highly of themselves, arrogant. And elegant, something which is beautiful, sophisticated, refined, elegant. Arrogant, so we start with the top, like the big air, a big wide air sound, air, like air in the, like in the room, there's air in the room, Arrig arrogant, arrogant. Um, but here with elegant, we're starting with a more horizontal sound, L, L, elegant, like an elephant, right? Elegant elephant. Oh, that's a good one. Elegant elephant. Oh, I just thought of that. <laughs> elegant elephants everywhere. No arrogant elephants. Elegant elephants only. That's a weird thing. I don't know if that's helpful for anybody, but that's a word I just said. Okay, so arrogant has that tall sound. Elegant is much more horizontal. And again, there's that L, L, L sound to work on there. So uh, sentences. Don't be arrogant. The design is elegant. Fry. Fly. All right, next in our L and R issue is fry and fly, fry and fly. So we can fry food or fly in a plane, but we cannot fry to Japan or fry to Thailand. We cannot fly something in a saucepan. <laughs> like, so please be careful, be very, very clear. Like, do you like to eat fried rice? No, you like to eat fried rice. So please be very careful about your L and your R in these words. Fly, fry. So fry, fry, fry. So mouth together for the R sound. Fry, fry, fly. So another good pair of words to work on. Fry, fly, fry, fly. Okay. Uh, sentences. Let's fry some chicken. I'm going to fly to London. Crash, crush, clash. Number eight, the next one is actually three words that sound quite similar. They are crash, clash, and crush. Clash, crash, crush. That's hard to say. Okay, let's talk about clash means like an argument or a fight to clash with someone. It's a verb or um, we can also use it as a noun. There was a clash among like workers yesterday. 
Crush is a is a verb. We can use crush as a verb and as a noun. First, let's talk about the verb. Like to crush a can, to to make something smaller, we crush it. Uh, so crush, it has a strong u sound. Crush, which is different from clash, which has a wide a sound. Clash. Um, so clash has the l sound followed by that wide a sound. Clash. And here uh, the second sound crush has r sound followed by a like kind of deep u sound. Crush. And then finally crash. Crash then has an R sound followed by an A sound, crash. So it goes from this closed R sound to an open A sound, crash, crash. So we have clash and crush and crash. So think about what your mouth is doing to make these uh, vowel sounds and consonant sounds together. So uh, crash then talks about two objects coming together, crashing like a car crash, for example. Crush is making something smaller and to clash is to have an argument usually between people. So please be careful. If you see a car crash, make sure to say car crash, not a car crush, not a car clash, but a car crash. <sighs> Okay, in a sentence, um, I saw a car crash. Crush your cans when you throw them away. We clashed at work. Talk, took. All right, so the next pair of words is talk and took. Talk and took. This is a vowel point. Talk should be a very open A sound. Talk, talk. And took should be kind of, imagine making like a tube with your mouth a little bit. I took, I took. So it's kind of, uh, you squish your cheeks together a little bit. Took, took, so your mouth becomes smaller. Talk is much more open. I talk every day. I took your money. <laughs> so talk and took are some words you can use to practice these vowel sounds. Talk, took, past tense of take, took, okay. In some sentences, I talk to my friends every day. I took the train to work this morning. Staff, stuff. Okay, so the next pair of words is staff and stuff. Staff and stuff. Be careful with staff and stuff. If you mix up these two, I've noticed people tend to write um, staff or stuff when they mean the opposite. So to be clear, staff refers to people who work at a location. So like, um, please talk to your staff, or I would like to see a staff member, a person uh, who works at a location. That is the staff. Um, and also, that's an uncountable noun. We don't say one staff, two staff. Um, well, I guess we do. We, we say staff members, I suppose, but usually we say staff as a group of people. Stuff, however, the U sound, stuff, refers to objects, the things you own, or the things in a room, just general stuff, general items. That's not Again, not a countable noun. Stuff is just objects, just a bunch of things, small things. Um, any room that has just a lot of objects, we can say, oh, there's a lot of stuff in here. So stuff, uncountable noun, stuff has a U sound, stuh. Uh, again, that sort of thinking, uh, uh, uh sound, stuff. Staff has that wide A sound, staff, staff, a big, like, so your mouth should be kind of big, staff, when you make this sound. So in sentences, I spoke to the staff. Where is my stuff? Okay, so those are 10 pairs of words that are essential to pronounce clearly. These are some words that I've noticed many people make mistakes with in speaking, yes, but also in writing too, because of a pronunciation problem. So please practice these. Are there any other words that are difficult for you to pronounce or that you know, you've know you noticed that people make mistakes with a lot? So let us know if you find any more or if there are any other things that are difficult for you. Thanks very much for watching this episode of Top Words. If you liked the video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up. Hit the like button, it's very helpful for us. Also, subscribe to us if you haven't already. You can find more stuff like this at EnglishClass101.com, so check that out too. You can find a link in the description. Thanks very much for watching this episode of Top Words, and I will see you again soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>